Okay, today we're going to change the starter in a 99 Ford Explorer 3.0. This is the CarQuest replacement. And I'll show you what we got up under here. I'm on a flat surface, so I was able to not even jack the wheels off the ground, but just jack it up enough to where I can get up under it. And I got, of course, I got my jack stands. But you got three, three bolts. And you can see I have the socket on one. That one's kind of tough to get to. You got to go, if your extension's too long, you're going to be in the way of that transmission linkage. And I didn't want to bend that. So I finally found the right combination to get the length I wanted. And you pretty much have to wrench the bolt all the way out because you can't get your your hand up under there to manipulate the bolt so i'm going to take that off and these other two here and then we got some wires back here as you can tell i've got an oil leak and that's pretty much what trashed the the motor and the starter and uh, it just started dragging and then just quit. So anyway, I'll, I'll be back when we're putting the new one in. All right. So I got it out. As you can see, got an oil pan leaking. But the way Ford did this, or whoever manufactured these, you got to lift the engine up to get that out. So that's another project. As you can see, the old starter is a little nasty, but my mechanic friend told me that eventually that would trash the starter that oil leaking on it so um, that was about two years ago so anyway um, I'm contemplating whether to use this this wire the new starter comes with a new wire but you have to you have to crimp it in and heat shrink it on the old one. But I think I'm gonna do that just to keep it all new. So anyway, I'll be back later. All right, <clears throat> so here is the new starter installed. It took a little bit longer because <clears throat> I got it on and actually had to take it back off because the bolts got uh, <clears throat> cross-threaded. So I had to take it out and I had to tap the starter and I had to run the bolts through a die to um, <clears throat> get it back get it back right so that took a little bit so anyway i want to show you the this is a stupid design but you can see down in there there's the solenoid and look what's right on top of it the daggum oil filter so when you take the oil filter off to change it, more than likely it's going to dump oil on it. Anyway, 
it's kind of dumb, but whatever. <clears throat> I wound up, you can see the blue tape. I uh, cleaned all that off and rewrapped everything. I on the new solenoid uh, wire, I spliced it into the old one as it recommended and heat shrunk it and then I wrapped it also in electrical tape. So hopefully that'll hold up for a little while longer anyway. But that's pretty much it. It should, <clears throat> if you don't run into any problems, you should be able to change it out in an hour. It took me a little bit longer than that. Like I said, I had to do the tapping and and all that with the starter and the bolts, but that took a little while because you have to go slow with that. So anyway, but it's an hour job, maybe two hours if you your first time. But it's a fairly easy uh, swap out. Three bolt, three main bolts. Those are 13 millimeter. Um, your power, your power cable is also 13 millimeter and then the solenoid, uh, connection is a 10 millimeter. So you might need some various, um, length extensions, like I said, to get around the exhaust to get to that upper bolt, but the other two are fairly easy to get to. And that's pretty much it. All right. Hope this helps.